All right, so uh, chronologically, I'm standing here in our shop and it's like almost a month after the SEMA show, right? Well, it's about three, three weeks. And uh, we got the car back in the shop and we're working on it and everything's kind of getting back in the groove because if you watched our blogs, you'll recall that, that getting ready for the SEMA show, we were out here late every night and things were getting kind of crazy. So it takes a little while to unwind and get back to business. And at this point, we are addressing the cooling fan situation. Now for the show, we had some weak little uh, single electric fan that was just kind of a band-aid so the car didn't overheat as we brought it in and out. But we certainly can't drive a 550 horse 496 Chevelle around without proper cooling. So we talked to our friends at Spall and got these 12 inch dual electric fans um, that are going into the car. And these are pretty unique because First of all, you've got these two 12-inch fans, which move like 3,100 CFM of air. I mean, it's just a tremendous amount of air. But they come on this plastic shroud, and you'll see these little squares here. Well, these squares are actually flapper doors um, made of rubber that open when the car is going down the highway. So when you're at speed, all these things open up, and the natural ram air force blows through your radiator in all of this area so you get maximum cooling going down the highway and then when the car is sitting in traffic it relies more on the fans to keep it cool and the fans have a curved blade design and they're they're supposed to be kind of quiet but you'll notice like on this one here if you look at this particular blade where my fingers pointing there's a little clip on there it's because spall balances each one of the blades individually so they uh they do everything in-house. They, they make the fans, the motors, the whole deal. And uh, we're putting this system in, and then this device is kind of cool. This is a, an electric um, temperature switch, okay? It's on an adapter here, so it'll screw into our manifold. But this device will turn the fans on at 185 degrees and turn them off at 165 without the use of any external controller. Uh, it just all it needs is this. We're also putting in some fan uh, relays from Spall. And our mounting scheme for this, they sell tabs that, that you can slide into here that will mount this fan unit to your car. But we noticed on our Chevelle, this piece here is the actual original uh, fan support, the, the core support on the top. This is, you know, holds the radiator in. So we just made some little 90 degree tabs that uh, will mount this together. So we'll throw that in in a minute. But to get more of the story on what Spall is all about, we actually talked to him at SEMA for a few minutes, and uh, through the magic of television, we'll go back in time to SEMA, talk to that guy, and when we come back, we'll be putting this in the car. It's magic. So I had a few questions for Justin Toller of Spall USA about um, how to keep a muscle car cool. Like for example, we just put together a 69 Chevelle with a 496 big block, and we chose to incorporate a couple of your fans. Yes. And let's talk a little bit about, you know, I know why we did it, but I, I want to hear from you the reasons why you want to look at Spall fans to cool a street-driven car that might make a lot of power. Uh, really with our fans, you want to make sure that uh, our fans are high-performance fans. We have a high-performance motor. They perform well in high static pressure. That's one thing that people need to take a look at when they're actually looking at purchasing a fan is don't look at just CFM ratings on free air. You need to look at what it's going to be, up, how it's going to perform behind a radiator, uh, you know, intercooler for a turbo, um, those such of so far. Um, the well, let me back you up just a little bit. Let's talk about high static pressure. What does that mean? Static pressure is how thick the core is of the radiator or the surface that you're trying to pull air through. Okay, so you're saying that if I took a fan, held it out in free air, nothing around it, yep. it might move X CFM of air. But yep. if, when I put it up against the radiator, it's, it's a lot gonna harder drop. to pull It's going to drop considerably, consi okay. you know, depending on the particular fan or how the motor makeup is. Okay, so how do I know if I got enough? That's one thing that the technical side of our engineering, in-house engineering, um, we, our sales staff knows our, they know our fans fairly well. Um, you tell us your application that you have, you give us a call um, and we can tell you what fan is going to work best in your application. Okay. Um, whether it needs to be a single fan or two fans. All right. So the size of the fan and its ability to move air is one consideration. Mm -hmm. What about the, the construction of materials of the fans? That's one thing that kind of sets us apart from our construction of materials of our, uh, our fans. Um, our fans are all designed in-house. Um, we can control every aspect. We have our own uh, tool and die shop. 
own injection molding, and we manufacture our own motors. Okay. So every aspect of the fan is done in-house. So you make the motors all the way to the blades? All the way to the blades. Really? Yep, and each fan is individually balanced um, at the end of production. As the motor goes along the assembly line, it's actually balanced internally. Okay. And then at the end of the assembly line, you'll notice on some of our fan blades, there's actually a, a small little weight on the fan blade really? itself. So the fan is actually externally balanced also. Wow. Um, that's I'm still amazed that you guys make your own motors. Everything's made in. Because you would think that would be an easy and cheap thing to source. Why don't you? We, it's easier for us to control the quality of the motor. Okay. Um, our company is set on quality. That's what sets us apart. Um, we control every aspect that way, so that way we know that when the, you receive the fan, you pull it out of the box, you put it on, it's going to work. Well, it's all very cool stuff, and I like the fact that your your materials are all very OE quality yes. stuff. This doesn't seem like somebody screwed this together in their yeah. garage. You know, it feels like it, uh, and, and even the look of the construction, like it belongs, it, it matches the car. That's one thing with our product. Our company is typically 80% OE, 20% aftermarket. Oh, okay. Um, you'll notice our fans are on some high-end exotic European automobiles that are OE. All right. Take a Ferrari for existence. Our fans are stock on Ferrari cars. Oh, okay. So well, that, that explains it then. We've, and this, so we just brought them over to, and we've adapted them to the hot rod and muscle car industry. Sure, cool. Okay, um, here's a note on installing one of these electric uh, fan on-off switches, these thermal deals. This particular car has uh, a temperature sender already installed in the manifold, and that's for the uh, temp gauge. And our thermostat housing has a, a hole that this will go into. I'm not sure that that's exactly where it's gonna live forever because it's kind of right up on top. I don't think these cylinder heads have a provision to put it in, so we might be stuck with that. But the note is, you have to resist the urge to put Teflon tape on these threads. And normally anything that goes into a cooling passage, you say, well, I'm gonna put Teflon tape on that so it doesn't leak. But in this case, uh, it will form an electric insulator and this won't work, it won't ground. So you gotta uh, tighten this up and hope it doesn't leak without any thread protector on it. Otherwise it won't work right. To wire this thing up, you can see we put a couple of relays in down here uh, onto the uh, core support and then there's a pair of fuses up here and then this is the wiring for the fan itself. Uh, it's pretty simple. One goes to power, one powers the fan, another goes to that uh, temperature switch to turn it on. Uh, but here's a little trick that uh, Nick, our one of our shop guys, figured out. This, these are standalone fuse holders. Let me open this up. Okay, these are your typical inline fuse holders, and they're always a pain in the ass to mount. Uh, but Nick found that if you use some of these Earl's uh, quarter-inch line clamps, this is a, a two-position clamp that's designed to hold like a brake line or something. You can securely mount these, and then it, you know, it doesn't look bad and it's not flopping around in the breeze and it actually worked out pretty well. The other, there, there's two nice things, there's three nice things about an electric fan. Four nice things. This is how easy it installs. You just stand here and it goes in. Um, but the nice thing about electric fans are running off their own power. They don't consume drag from the engine so they free up some horsepower. They also blow at top speed, even if you're idling, so you don't have to worry about a fan clutch. And then uh, in this case, they offer a lot of clearance. You can see between the, uh, the water pump pulley and the fan itself, there's plenty of room in there. So, And here you can kind of see how these guys just adapted the, uh, that top cover to fit. And it looks factory. 